Hello everybody! I promised one of my subscribers to make a video about Bulgars, so in this video I will talk about this Turkic nomadic warrior tribe that came from the Pontic Caspian steppe and arrived to the Volga and Danube regions during the 5th 7th centuries. The origin of the early Bulgars is still unclear. Their homeland is believed to be situated in the Kazakhstan and the North Caucasian steppes. The first mention of Bulgar tribes came from Armenia at the end of the 2nd century and beginning of the 3rd century. These days it is area of Vanan. Armenian historian Moses Harinatsi wrote that during the reign of Parthian king Arsaces, there was a turmoil in Bulgarian state, so Bulgars migrated to Armenia. Some scholars propose that Bulgars may have been a branch or offshoot of the Huns, but this version has no evidence. What is clear is that during Attila's time, Bulgars were under influence of Huns and fought as a part of their army. The first clear mention and evidence of the Bulgars was in 480, when they served as the allies of the Byzantine emperor Zeno. In the 5th century, the second migration of nomadic tribes started. According to Precious, in 463, the representatives of Huns came to the emperor in Constantinople and explained that they had been driven out of their homeland by the Sabirs, who had been attacked by the Avars. Scholars attribute this account that some Bulgar groups were probably carried away by the Huns to the Central Europe. In the 6th century, historian Feofan mentioned that several military conflicts between Byzantine and Bulgars happened. In the 7th century, they reached their prosperity. In 626, the Bulgars besieged Constantinople. Under the leadership of Kubrat, in 635, the Bulgars crushed the power of the Avars in the Black Sea region. With the fading of the power of the Avars in these years, the Bulgars and Hazars were gaining strength in the western steppes. This is how a new state arose. Great Bulgaria, with its capital in Phanagoria. After Kubrat's death, he left five sons. When he was dying, he bequeathed to his sons not to be separated from each other under any circumstances and to live together so that they would rule over everything and would not fall into slavery to another people. However, the sons acted differently. They moved away from each other and each ruled the people under his control. Researchers interpret this story differently. Some consider it is a legend, others support Feofan's belief in its authenticity. The first son, Badbayan, keeping his father behest, remained in the same place. Then Badbayan fell under the tributary rule of the Hazars. The second, Kotrag, crossed the river Tanais, or northern Danets, and settled opposite to his brother. The third, Asparuk, crossed the Dnieper and Dniester rivers, reaching the Ogle area north of the Danube and settled there. He believed that this place was fortified and impregnable, as there were rivers and swamps around it. Apparently, Asparuk was afraid of the Hazars, Later, having entered the, into the battle with the Romans, he drove the enemy to Varna. Here, the Bulgars conquered the Slovenians and Severians. The fourth and fifth sons crossed the new. One remained under the control of the Avars in Pananonia, and the other one, having reached Pentapolis, fell under the rule of Byzantine. In 670, the Hazars in alliance with Hungarians, defeated those Bulgars. The first Bulgarian Empire had a significant political influence in the Balkans. These Bulgars were closely connected to Byzantine, participating in their wars against the nomads and Arabs, and sometimes even raiding Byzantine during its domestic crisis. 
During the reign of Krum, the empire doubled in size, including new lands in Macedonia and Serbia. He also successfully repelled the invading force of the Byzantine, as well as defeated the Pannonian Avars, where additionally extended the empire's size. In 865, during the reign of Khan Baris I, the Bulgars accepted Christianity as the official religion and Eastern Orthodoxy in 879. The greatest expansion of the empire and prosperity during the time of Simeon I is considered as the Bulgarian Golden Age. However, from the time of Peter I in the 10th century, their power declined. The Hungarians, Kievan Rus, as well as Pechenegs and Cumans held many raids into their territory, and so that they were weakened and were eventually conquered in 1018 by the Byzantine Empire. Those Bulgars had a well-developed clan and military administrative system of inner and outer tribes governed by the Theoling clan. The Bulgars did not have nobility, yet their leaders and common men became noblemen on the battlefield, indicating social mobility. Later, members of the upper social class bore the title boyar. The nobility was divided into small and great boyars. In the 10th century, there were three classes of boyars. The six great boyars, the outer boyars, and the inner boyars. The great boyars occupied military administrative offices in the state, as well as the council where they gathered for decisions on important matters of the state. But there was another Bulgarian state that existed longer and went on a different path. Volga Bulgaria was formed in the period from the second half of the 8th century until the beginning of the 10th century. At the beginning of the migration to the Volga, the Bulgarian Empire was located not in the Kuban region or Caucasia, but between the Donets and Southern Bug rivers. The main enemy of Volga Bulgaria during the reign of Almush was Hazaria. Almush annually paid the Hazar king a sable skin from each house in his state. From the story of Ibn Fadlan, we can conclude that the son of the Bulgarian king was held as a hostage by the Hazarian king. By the beginning of the 10th century in Volga Bulgaria, the clan system was eliminated. By this time, a class society of the pre-feudal type had formed. The producers were community members, but the labor of slaves was also used in the economy. The country was ruled by four generally recognized kings. Apparently, they had to occupy the throne in a certain sequence. From the moment of its formation, Volga Bulgaria became a center of transit trade. Particularly, brisk trade was with Hazars and Russians, who brought sables, ermines, and squirrels to the Volga. The center of Volga Bulgaria state was the city of Bulgar. In the descriptions of the middle of the 10th century, the city of Bulgar was considered small. It did not have numerous districts. It was known primarily as a port where merchants from neighboring states landed. After the defeat of Hazaria by the Kievan prince Svetoslav in 965, the role of Bulgaria as a trading center increased. Three trade directions were established with the East, Russia, and neighbors. Cities were built, crafts developed. The furs, grain, and honey were widely used as goods and means of circulation. The development of trade was greatly facilitated by the waterways along Volga and Oka rivers. Thanks to them, Bulgaria becomes a center of transit trade. From Bulgar, a path was laid to Kiev. Storehouses arose in Bulgar city, where goods were stored. Here, merchants, guards, porters, oarsmen, servants, travelers stopped to rest a whole service sector appeared. All these factors contributed to the emergence of the state. The second half of the 10th century to beginning of the 13th century was marked by invasions of the Bulgarian lands. At the end of the 10th century, the Kievan princes fought with the Volga Bulgars. 
In 1117, Cumans came to the Bulgars. The Bulgar prince gave them a drink with poison, and uh, Cuman Khan Ayapa and the other Cuman princes were poisoned. In 1164, Prince of Vladimir Andrei Bogolubsky with his son Isislav, brother Yaroslav, and Prince of uh, Murom Yuri went on a campaign to the Bulgarian land. The glorious city of the Bulgars, Bryakimov, was taken and three cities were burned. Many Bulgars died, the banners were taken away, and Andrei returned with victory. In 1202, Mongol Tatar troops approached the borders of Volga, Bulgaria, where they spent the winter. In 1229, the Mongols pushed back the Bulgar guard detachments from Yai. In the face of real threat, the Bulgars sent envoys to Ruiz with an offer of peace. Apparently, the idea was expressed to jointly defend against a formidable enemy. There was no agreement, and the Bulgars themselves had to repel the attack, in which they had temporarily success. In 1236, the main forces of the Mongols met with the Jochi clan near the Bulgar city. Jochi clan included Batu, Hord, Sheiban, and Tangut. All four branches of the Chinggis Khan's family took part in the campaign, and in winter Subutai was also sent against the Bulgar people. Of course, Bulgar city was destroyed, but soon already under Batu, the Bulgar was restored. Khan Batu in 1242 and 1246 lived in this city. In 1370, the Bulgarian throne was occupied by representative of the Russian Principality, who began to control trade affairs. A lot of raids conducted on the city of Bulgar weakened it. So the capital started to move from the Bulgar to Kazan, where later they would be a Kazan Kaganate. It was the tribes of the Volga Bulgaria, mainly the Bulgars, who made the bulk of the Tatar people in Russia. Also, the modern descendants of Volga Bulgars are Chuvash people in Russia. All Bulgars practiced Tengrism, the belief to the god of the sky, but Christianity penetrated via Slavic subjects in the new Bulgaria and was adopted in the first Bulgarian Empire by Knez Boris I in 865 as a state religion. Volga Bulgars chose to adopt Islam in 922. This is the story of Bulgars who came from the East to Europe, assimilated with other local ethnicities and fully disappeared as an independent actor by the 13th century. Thank you for watching my videos, please subscribe to my channel and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!